Good afternoon. I realize I'm one of the last two people to tune in and open bar, so uh, I'll try to be uh, good with my time. There we go. Um, the, the presentation that we have here is largely the standard public service announcement for the New York Green Bank because we're a division of Maxerta, so there's certain rules around and things that, we, that we're allowed to say. Um, what I will attempt to do, and I'm going to try to be brief, uh, we agreed we're going to try to spend more time answering questions and listening to us talk, so I'm going to give you sort of the standard public service announcement, but as well, what I'm going to try to do is pepper that with some things that I think uh, hopefully you'll find a little bit useful in terms of what it is that we do and how we go about doing business. Um, so this is who we are. Probably the most important element of it is that uh, we, we, under the new rev that came out, we've been fully funded basically up to a billion dollars over the next 10 years. So we have a, quite, a, quite a pool of cash available to us to be able to fund projects that fit within our scope. Uh, one of the things that um, I think is probably worthwhile pointing out, New York Green Bank is basically chartered to fund projects. We get request and projects within the state of New York. We got a project last week from Brazil. Uh, we, uh, we get projects all the time from developers and from other people that are looking for working capital. You know, work right? Somebody brings to us a big product, project uh, that has all the bells and whistles that you can find on our website. We, of course, put it in the queue, we do scoring, and go through the credit analysis. So we do, in the context of this conversation, we do a community set of projects, we do a of projects. Um, one of the things that, that we are very actively involved in is uh, we're, we're putting out RFPs. Uh, what an RFP to the Green Bank is, is it's a, a product that we believe that there's an appetite in the marketplace. The idea is, is that we'll specify sort of a box that if you can go through and tick, tick the New York Green Bank boxes, and your project fits inside this box. I, I, I wouldn't go so far to say that it's a pre-approved, but it, the, it's a very expediting process for us to do and do the end uh, Good example, um, we received a project uh, proposal uh, a couple weeks ago for a project uh, in upstate New York. Is a guy who owns a, a commercial, commercial building. He wanted to do a roof, rooftop solar panel, which is sort of like right down the fairway for us. Uh, the idea occurred to us that the traditional way that, that one goes about underwriting that is, is you, you analyze the, the cash flows that are going to be drawn off over the 20 years, you try to forecast power prices, you try to think about what the retail is going to be, blah, 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 you do a net present value calculation, and then we'll land a certain percentage against that. What occurred to us was that, that there's a significant gap in the market as it pertains to lending against commercial and industrial office buildings. So the idea occurred to us is that, look, what we need to be in a position is, is to be able to lend against the real estate value. And we basically cut out all of the traditional underwriting. And so in effect, we become, we're lending against the owner's collateral in the real estate, as opposed to lending against the particulars and the details of the project. Well documented, wealth of information out there, lots of benchmarks. And so basically, if you come to us with a real estate project that's got a recent appraisal with a decent project that fits inside the Green Bank box, we are in a pot, we're in a position to be able to expeditedly underwrite that project. So that's a good example. So you're going to see that part of coming out very soon. We also have, we've now got uh, quite a stable of uh, community solar projects. So we have another RFP that's going to come out pretty much the same time that is going to say that if you fit this box and you can tick these boxes in terms of a community solar project, uh, we were comfortable with that enough to be able to simulate that to the next level of fashion. Just a clarifying question. I had always heard that the New York Green Bank didn't fund projects. It, it you know, securitized essentially other loans that you were behind traditional financers to help lower risk, but you weren't directly loaning to projects. Has something changed or am I, have I always misunderstood? No, I'm not really sure because I can't. Can't, uh, I can't speak to that, but let me flip through my slides very quickly, and I'll try to speak up. So, in a broad sense, these are the type of capital solutions that we think that we bring to the table. One is a credit enhancement. A lot of discussion about LMI this morning and through the course of the day. We've been deluged over the last several weeks of tax equity providers asking us to provide a credit enhancement against LMI component. I'll tell you a secret. They came to us 
we said, that's very interesting. There's obviously an appetite in the marketplace for this. So let's go build a credit model and a risk module to understand and underwrite LMI risk. Our analysis concluded the more LMI you got, the better of the deal it is. It actually reduces the risk of the project. And so now we have people lined up for us to underwrite and provide a credit guarantee for LMI components of community solar projects, as well as a whole host of other renewable tech projects. So credit enhancements are, are very common and popular for us. Um, one point here, we underwrite um, credit risk. We, we won't underwrite project risk. We won't underwrite technology risk. We won't underwrite performance risk. We simply will underwrite credit risk. So that's the risk that uh, one of your counterparties doesn't pay or, or is late making payments. So that's very popular for us. Uh, warehousing and aggregation. Uh, very, very common in community solar or rooftop solar where a developer might have a pipeline of 15, 20, 30 projects. Um, the idea is, is that we will ask them to go out and build or develop the first one. They take that first one, they drop it into the facility. Then we will loan against a certain percentage of the value of that one project. Then they have that money to go out and develop the next project. They drop that one in. Now they've got the, essentially the equity value of two projects. They can borrow against that, go out and do the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one. So warehousing and aggregation facilities uh, are, are very popular for us. We know how to do that. It's very simple for us to underwrite that. Um, asset, loans and investments, I'm not exactly sure what this is. Uh, and composite projects. Uh, a lot of times we've been asked to do the back uh, tax equity back leverage and then provide a credit enhancement on the front end of that. So that, again, the type of things that are very typical for us. One thing I should be very clear about. Uh, a number of people come to us thinking that the Green Bank, because we're a division of MySERTA, part of the New York State government, that you're going to get cheap capital from us. And nothing could be further from the truth. The one thing that we do like to say, though, and I think is the rates that we are going to quote you, we believe accurately and fairly represent the risk profile of whatever it is that you're asking us to underwrite. Okay? Now, you may not agree with us. You may think that the risk is actually quite quite a bit lower than what we may think it is and how we price it. But I can assure you that uh, myself and my peers within the organization are more than adequately qualified to actually assess these risks, quantify them, underwrite them, and actually reflect that in, in market rate. And uh, if we have time, I'll give you some examples of some of the very in interesting and creative things that we've been doing to try to make this thing go. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're a fiduciary. You know, it's not our money. It's a uh, great repair money, money that's coming uh, through, through NYSERDA. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're responsible for the money that we invest in uh, investing it. Uh, yeah, yeah, Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, one of the other things that's very important to us, which is part of our underwriting criteria, is the New York Green Bank was originally envisioned and it was formed to sort of bridge market gaps. Ideally, in a perfect world, we wouldn't need the New York Green Bank. Right? You could go to your local bank or you could go to some of the big institutional uh, banks in, in the city and you could put your project on the table and you'd go in the queue with all the other project finance opportunities that are out there and you'd get a, a rate that's commensurate with that. But we recognize that this is sort of a new space for, for the financial and, uh, services industry. And so the idea is that the New York Green Bank steps in to sort of pave the road, hopefully, so that private capital comes in behind us. And so typically what happens is, is we will come in to build some of these aggregation facilities, build some of the experience, build some of the data, such that over time the uh, private capital will actually come in and, and uh, come in and, and take us out. What that means is, is that typically we like to play on the lower end of the yield curve. So, so for us, sort of a, a sweet spot would be, you know, maybe a, a year or a two year maximum uh, availability period to build or develop or aggregate a, a series of projects. Then we'll be in it in a term period for a couple of years, maybe three years most, uh, to be able to season it, to build some experience so that a subsequent investor might be able to come in and get comfortable with the profile <clears throat> that exists there. But then we want to be taken out because we want to be able to take that capital and go do more and more and more of those projects. So one of the key things that we look for is, is how is there a way that we can build or structure this project such that we can recycle the capital as quickly as possible? And so there's a number of innovative <coughs> incentives that we put into some of our deals to try to, number one, 
cause these things to occur, but then number two on the back end, uh, create incentives for people to take us out. Uh, so, so besides being able to promote the whole business of community solar and all the advantages that it brings to communities, um, it's important for us to be able to recycle those funds very quickly and, and get as many turns out of it as possible. Uh, one of the things that, through some of the conversations that we've had here, through some of the conversations that we've had elsewhere, it's also become apparent to us that there is a place in the market for some longer tenor uh, term financing, uh, things where the projects are longer. You know, we're, we're indifferent, to be quite, quite honest with you. As long as we're getting a market-based rate for the risk that we're taking, underwriting longer tenor risk is quite frankly <coughs> as simple as underwriting shorter tenor risk. And it gives us an opportunity to play both ends of the yield curve, to be able to make money on it. And so we're beginning to warm up and we're beginning to think about places and that there is indeed a place in our portfolio for longer dated projects and longer tenor things. So we're not quite there yet. I expect that you may see an RFP coming out maybe uh, later on this year, maybe uh, towards the end of the year, to look at maybe some projects that have a little bit longer date uh, time frames. Um, again, credit quality, we're, we're basically uh, trying to understand the credit risk, and we're trying to underwrite the credit risk of many of these. Uh, we're looking at um, trying to quote rates that are consistent with the market rates for those risks. We're looking at market transformation, basically being able to build confidence in the rate of financial markets for these type of projects and the type of cash flows that we're talking about. Of course, it has to have clean energy. Uh, we look for it to being scale scalable, and we look for additionality, meaning that it's a place where the New York Green Bank can step in where, where other people and other sources of capital uh, wouldn't normally be available. Um, for a typical community solar project, these are the kind of um, elements that if you were to go on our website, and if you were to submit a proposal, these would be the key kind of things that we would look for. I don't think that there's any any real surprise here in any of this. Um, one of the one of the I can't remember if it's in this or if it's further further down. Uh, th this is our website is actually quite specific. Don't submit a proposal that doesn't have all these points addressed because when we go through the scoring committee, it's going to be kicked out. I'm going to have to call you and then I'm going to have to get you to resubmit the proposal. Right. So again, all this detail is on our website. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get through this so we, we can open it up for questions a little bit later. A lot of all this information is available on, on the website. Um, just give you a couple of examples of some of the things that uh, we, we've been doing. Um, again, I won't go through all the details. This is a big community solar project that uh, we closed on earlier in the year. Um, $25 million warehouse facility for a community solar project. Uh, and we've got probably, I'm guessing right now, there's at least six other community solar projects in our, in our queue that we're looking um, typically, um, we originally had in here a list of people because one of the questions was, was gee, um, you know, we're trying to, in our community or in our organization, we're thinking about a, a, a community solar project, you know, who do we go talk to if we need tax equity? Uh, because the New York Green Bank, um, our, my, our lawyers throw this, we're, we're a super tax exempt, I have no idea what that means. Uh, and he's trying to explain it to me at least a half a dozen times and I still don't understand it. <laughs> We're super tax exempt, so we cannot play the role of a tax equity investor. We can provide back leverage to a tax equity. We're extremely comfortable providing forbearance uh, for all the issues of tax equity. We're extremely comfortable uh, putting ourselves in a position to make sure that there's going to be no clawback on the, uh, on the uh, tax incentives. So you don't need to worry about that. That's something that we you know, we do 10 times before breakfast every morning. So, yeah, uh, separately or, or, or away, I, I don't know, I, we're gonna talk to KeyBank here in just a minute. Uh, they're quite comfortable and being happy being a tax equity investor in US Bank. It's another organization that's quite quite happy, quite comfortable, quite familiar with tax equity. Um, our office is on Broadway. You can't walk more than a couple of miles down Broadway, and there are at least a half a dozen other institutions that are big players in the tax equity space, and you know, if you're, we're not allowed to recommend anybody, but if you send me an email, I'm happy to suggest somebody that you should go have a cup of coffee with next time you're listening. Uh, the same thing with uh, project develop developers. Many of you are, and many project developers actually have some element of or investors who have an appetite for things. Um, you know, our, our underwriting process is, again, if you've ever bought a house or if you've ever financed uh, you know, a swimming pool or something, it's nothing that you'd be surprised at. We look at the proposal, 
we try to get our head wrapped around the risk uh, and all the elements of risks that are involved. We will draft a term sheet. There will be a dialogue back and forth to try to get a meeting of the minds. Once we get a meeting of the minds, we'll take it to a preliminary credit uh, committee where our management uh, will get their heads wrapped around the deal and buy off on any of the terms. Uh, we'll do a final due diligence, which usually includes a legal and an independent engineer. Uh, we'll take it back to the final credit uh, committee approval and then it's ready for funding. You know, I, I just talked about it here in about 45 seconds. It actually takes about 45 days. Uh, <laughs> the whole thing. And then uh, construction funding commences once the pre development elements of the project are finalized. Any studies, permits. Uh, we, we get requests relatively frequently uh, Gene, can you fund a study? We don't fund studies. Right? We get questions of, gee, I need. You know, money to go work with National Grid for an interconnection. We, we don't do that. Now, you come to us, you know, if you can finance it on your Amex card or go get a working capital loan from somebody and go do that, build the credit package, send it to us, we don't mind giving you money against the total value of the project. You'll get a certain percentage of the advance rate based on the risks. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if those costs are included in the total project, it makes perfectly good sense, and we would lend against that. But you can't come to us up front and say, gee, I need $400,000 to go to a national because we don't, we don't do that. We lend against projects. Okay? Um, again, I won't, I won't go into this. This is an example where it'll be in your take home package. Um, this is, you go to our website, uh, it's pretty well laid out, pretty well designed. In terms of this is how you go submit a proposal. Um, you submit a proposal, you'll know what mean about a week after we score it, and there's all of our contact details. And I apologize, I, we're going to try to leave time for a week, and I'll be around for drinks after, so we'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay.